It's what you learn after you think you know it all accounts. So we learned a lot about team. And he really believed that if you're going to win, you're going to win as a team. Everybody's as important as everybody else. Last guy on the bench is as important as the star. And there is no star. The star is the team. Coming to you from Naked Island. Not called naked because you get naked, but because it's, uh, it's got nothing on it. You can see in the background we're the only ones here. Hey, I want to talk to you about John Wooden since I'm sitting here. Might as well go through it. It's vlog number 13. And this is about three things. About almost leaving UCLA. About team. And it's about criticism without anger. So let me start with almost leaving UCLA. So he was pretty cemented into UCLA after two years, but in the summer of of that year, Piggy Lambert at Purdue, his alma mater, retired, and they came calling John Wooden. And here's some perks they're going to give him. Twice his salary, club membership, new car every year, huge uh, life insurance policy, a home on campus and a full-time assistant and back then in 1951 1950 that was unheard of to get an offer like that so of course he was really excited he went into the UCLA athletic department to talk to uh, the uh, the athletic director and tell him hey I want to forgo my third year and of course the athletic director didn't want to lose him so he said, hey, John, you push really hard for that third year. We'd really like you to honor it. And John Wooden walked out of the office and said, okay, I honor it. I'm a man of my word, man of integrity. They're not going to let me out of my third year. So went home and told Nell. was very disappointed and said, hey, we'll, we'll spend one more year here. And then after the year, we'll go to Purdue. And uh, that was it. So after year three, Purdue never gave him an offer. And... They were really starting to enjoy California and Hollywood and Westwood. And so they decided that it really didn't matter even if at that point that Purdue offered or not, they were pretty cemented in at UCLA. So number two, team. So he really believed in team. He said it took him 15 years before he won a national championship. And during that 15 years, he really redefined and defined his coaching abilities. Really took that long to get his system down and his coaching abilities to the point where he could win a national championship first one in 1964. So during that time, he, he learned a couple things. It's, and here's a quote, another John Wooden quote. It's what you learn after you think you know it all that counts. It's what you learn after you think you know it all that counts. So we learned a lot about team. And he really believed that if you're gonna win, you're gonna win as a team. Everybody's as important as everybody else. Last guy on the bench is as important as the star. And there is no star. The star is the team. 
So a good example of this was Sidney Wicks. Came to him as one of the, the greatest power forwards in the country out of high school. In his sophomore year, he wasn't starting. And he was pretty disappointed about it. He came up to John Wooden and said, John, you know I'm better than everybody out there. Why don't you play me? Why don't you start me? He said to Sydney, I know you're better than everybody out there. You know, your players know. But until you figure out how to play as a team member, you're not going to start. So he believed in sharing the ball. He didn't believe that one guy take all the shots. He believed in team, true team. Everybody contributes. And so it took Sydney till his junior year before he figured this out. His junior and senior year he started. He's a two-time All-American. And he was a pivotal factor in, in, in UCLA's two national championships in 1970 and 71. So that's what team's all about. No matter how good you are, you're not more important than the team. Boy, how that's changed today, unfortunately. The, set, the third thing he learned was criticism without anger. And a good example of this was he, he never would criticize his team or players at the end of a practice. He never, he never criticized them or yell at them. He was a very, very big dis disciplinarian, very firm on what he wanted. He was the leader. Didn't want him to lead, lead uh, him blindly, but they wanted him to know that, hey, I'm, I'm the leader here. You got to follow my principles. You got to follow my my program. Good example. This was Bill Walton. Get him mixed up with John Wooden sometimes. I don't know why. So Bill Walton, he was in the hippie generation. They believed in long hair. John Wooden didn't believe in long hair at all. He believed in short hair. He believed in tighten it up, look good, look ready, and so. Every season, Bill would come to coach right before practice with long hair. I said, Coach, I don't really cut my hair, do I? And, Coach, I'm not going to cut it this year. And John Wood would say to Bill, Bill, it's been great having you on the team. You've been a great player. It's been great knowing you, and I wish you the best in life. And he'd take out his hand and shake his hand. And Bill would, every time, get on his bike, right down to the barber shop get his hair back, ride back to practice, and be ready to practice. People used to ask John Wooden, would you have really suspended Bill Walton for a long time? And he said, Bill thought so. That's all that mattered. So he learned that that you can, you can get your point across without anger. And another thing he learned at the end of practice, you gotta do something fun. And I would encourage you guys to end up practice, incorporate an activity that's really fun for your players. So his was back for a long time. You couldn't dunk in high school, in uh, college. You couldn't dunk. You couldn't dunk. So at the end of every practice, he would let his players go crazy for five minutes and just dunk, dunk whatever way they want. And he said they, they were like little kids, little kids hooping and hollering. They were so happy. They did this at the end of every practice. They looked forward to it. And so that was his fun thing. I know for us, it was half court shots with the players, coaches against players. Find something fun to do with the kids at the end of practice. So they don't see you as just an ogre and disciplinarian, but you see you as a fun guy too. So anyways, that's what I got here on Naked Island. Just want to end this and say, I love you guys. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support and just cannot thank you enough. Go Bearcats! Hey guys, Coach Corsi here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like, and thanks for being a part of this vision for the future to impact our youth and the next generation. God bless you and go Bearcats.